Welcome back. So right now I have something called fake DB that calls customers inside the business logic layer. That's bad. I still have a direct access to my actual database from the business logic layer. If we look at our drawing here, we should not be able from the business logic layer to actually talk to the database. So right now we're actually doing this. We're talking all the way down here around the actual data access layer. We need to fix that now. We need to start looking at how we can implement unit of work and repository patterns to actually start communicating through the data access layer to get away from this cheating of actually going directly down and grabbing the database. So we'll move the fake database down one layer more. Last lesson it was from here to here, now we're going to move it further down to here. So that's what the next couple of lessons is going to be all about. This lesson, let's just briefly have a discussion about the, the repository pattern that we're going to build in the next couple of lessons, because what is that all about? So I found Martin Fowler's page here because he is one of the gods when we're talking about design patterns. This is the link if you guys want to play around with it. He explains it like this. Um, the repository pattern mediates between the domain and data mapping layers using a collection-like interface for accessing domain objects. Hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm going to try and show you this in code in the next couple of lessons and maybe it'll start making more and more sense. But I think if I should explain the repository pattern uh, on a higher level, I would say it's pretty much just taking some information from memory uh, sorry, from the database and putting it inside memory in your program. So we can, a repository pattern, is, it gives us a few cool things. One is, it can actually help us grab information from the database, work with it in memory, and then at some point save the changes back to the database. So we don't have to go and make requests to the database all the time. Another really cool thing is, it helps us actually avoid duplicating code again and again for each request we need to make to a database. And again, I'll try and show you examples of that. And the last thing that we gain is the repository pattern actually helps us switch out. So right now we're using a fake database. So we'll make a fake database repository, but later we'll switch that with a real database repository without making any changes to our business logic layer, our application, uh, sorry, our UL layer, we'll actually switch so that we save data inside a real database instead of a fake database. I think that would be one of the main things you guys will actually notice when we start using the repository pattern. But enough said, let's try and implement it. Again, if you really want to dive into the theory, try and go and read the site here, martinfowler.com. He has a really good explanation, but I feel that without actual code, it's hard to explain for me at least. So see you in the next lesson where we'll start implementing the repository pattern. Have fun.